I thought this chapter was a ton of fun, but really I liked what we saw from Terry. Even though it was just brief at the beginning of the chapter, um, I certainly respect and appreciate uh, what he brings to the table. Gourmet number 39, a wild elephant. <laughs> well, hello, my brothers and sisters of the Nerd Nation. I, as always, am Jim, here to bring you another review on the awesome, action-packed, uh, really deeper than it looks on the surface, Tale of Toriko. Our last chapter, of course, saw us with um, Rin and Toriko traversing the Devil Athletic and um, really kind of uh, Terry coming in and, and saving the day and guiding them through uh, with minimal to no resistance. However, um, it looks it appears as if uh, one of the GT robots, um, the one that had uh, had appeared near them by the rock drum and the black carpet, has, has also followed them there because we see uh, shortly thereafter that he's kind of leaving a wake of destruction in his path as he goes through the Devil Athletic. So, that's where things leave off. That's where this one picks up. And it's really kind of cool because um, a lot of this has to do with uh, morals and pride and things like that. And, and this battle wolf, even though it's just a, a newborn, basically, um, has a lot of those things instilled in him um, that, that uh, I, I guess, just natural for, for some animals, uh, but certainly something that many of us humans could, could learn something from. He feels as if uh, they get through the Devil Athletic and then he can sense the GT robot is behind him. And his thought process is, I need to stay back and take care of this thing now and face it and take it out because Toriko is my master. And although I was trying to get reunited with him, uh, ultimately to help him or to warn him of this danger, um, ultimately I led this particular enemy to my master. Uh, so now I have to go and clean up after myself. And uh, it's really kind of cool because uh, Terry is just, you know, turns and gets just this awesome, just badass look to, <laughs> look to him, you know. And he's just, and it's funny because Toriko's like, yep, and he already made up his mind and everything else. You know, there's no, uh, that, that's what he's going to do. He's going to stay and face the GT robot because, uh, again, he believes that uh, it was his fault that he led it there. So, uh, so I thought that was very cool. And again, shows you just a lot of that sort of instinctual, um, you know, uh, morality that, uh, that, that the animal has, the battle wolf has, and, um, and just in general, the, um, just the, the loyalty, you know, protecting its master and, you know, not being like, Hey, well, listen, I got to you and helped you. So, you know, this is just a consequence of this dude followed me, not my fault. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's not like that at all. He's like, this dude followed me and I'm going to go tear his shit up. So uh, the next part of the chapter, and actually it kind of sucks because it, it, it steers away from that. I thought the whole thing was going to be about that. So then it goes and it, it steers away from that. And it, right as it, he goes and makes this great, you know, battle cry, you know, this, you know, just, I just imagine him just going crazy and, you know, teeth bare and uh, fangs bared and everything like that. And uh, anyway, and then it goes and it shows uh, Komatsu and Sunny, and of course they're working towards the Regal Plateau as well. You know, um, they wound up having to go through that prehistoric swamp and this and that, and that's where we last saw them. But now they're obviously close proximity enough to each other, probably within a few miles, I would assume, uh, because they hear the the battle cry. You know. And Komatsu starts freaking out, and he's like, you know, I hope Toriko and Rin are okay, and what if that was Terry, and maybe this, and maybe that, maybe we should go help them. And Sonny's just kind of like, <laughs> listen, the the battle wolf, or that, that, if that is the battle wolf, that wasn't like a, hi, how are you doing? That was like, a, I'm about to eat, I'm about to bust some shit up, you know what I mean? That's about, it's come at me, bro. That's what that was. So he's explaining that to, to you know, Komatsu, and he goes, so if we interfered now and this and that, you know, and Komatsu's like, yeah, yeah, it wouldn't be beautiful, right? <laughs> so he's just like, exactly. And he's like, besides, what's the what's the point or what's the fun in helping somebody unless you do it uh, unless you actually do it at the last possible instant, you know, like before they're they're done. So he's got a, a weird sense of uh, uh, you know, just kind of a weird sense that that he has about him. But but it's kind of funny though too because we see the softer side of him as well. And even Komatsu goes and mentions that uh, sometime during the during the chapter about how you know he. Uh, when they got thrown by the rock drum, for instance, without a thought, Sonny just caught, you know, caught Komatsu with his magical hair strands or whatever, you know, and uh, and, and he showed a, a flash of anger at Gourmet Corp. So it's not like he's just so full of himself. He just sort of has a different way of going about things, you know. I don't know if it's like an eccentric sort of thing um, or, or what, you know, but he just sort of reminds me of one of those like, hmm, my shit doesn't stink type of thing. Um, you know, I'm good, but I know I'm good, you know, so which a lot of times to me makes people very ugly because it's like, you know what, you, you got to have you have a piece of humble pie, brother. But 
Anyways, that's, uh, uh, again, just my observation what we've seen of Sonny so far. Very cool powers, um, but not the most approachable, dynamic personality that works well with others. So, uh, but he's there when you need him. So they wind up approaching and getting to the, uh, so, you know, he just basically just says, listen, let's just press on, you know. So they come upon uh, this this cliff base. It goes straight up in the air, you know. And Kamutz uh, is like, oh, my God, you know. And he's like, yeah, that's the, uh, that's the, the regal wall, you know, the regal cliff. That's the entrance to the regal plateau. 3,000 meters straight up, you know, and I just doing the rough math, that's approximately two miles, you know, it's, it's around 10,000 feet, and, uh, and I'm like, oh man, are you kidding me, two miles straight up, you know, and Komatsu's even like, Komatsu had the same thought I did, he was like, what, are you shitting me, you know, so Sonny's just like, blah, 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 blah. Well, we'll, we'll get up there, you know, and, and Komatsu's like, what, well, we gotta climb, and he's like, no, we're gonna walk, of course, so they just show him using his magical hairs to just kind of walk him up the side of the cliff face, and it grabs Komatsu too, and brings him up, and he's like, we're gonna move at a bridge pace of five kilometers per hour so we should reach the summit in approximately 36 minutes and i'm just like okay so then it goes and it takes us to the top of the regal plateau right and uh where we go and we see uh we first we see like this beast this creature or whatever uh you know we wind up seeing this thing and then we go and we see one of the gt robots uh and again it's this is the one that um it's got the fur like the chewbacca thing which i think all of them have but he's got like the, the almost the bandolier looking thing that goes over him like chewbacca which is what he reminds me of like like if chewbacca had an anteater brother that would be him and um, anyway, so, and he's up at the top and he's, you know, firing off the, the Regal Mammoth is up there too. The Regal Mammoth is up there and the Regal Mammoth is like just stomping on things and beasts that are trying to attack me just, and this thing's fucking huge, man. I mean, just the way that they show it, the size differential is absolutely disgusting when you, when you look at it. And, and this isn't even the, the best perspective shot, but here we go, sorry. But, uh, but that gives you kind of an idea just, you know, how big this freaking thing is and just drawn so beautifully and you just see like the havoc and everything that's going on as this gt robot's like firing off different shots and everything it opens up its you know its face or whatever and then fires off different stuff from its cannon and he's like geez you got to be kidding me so he winds up saying that uh, that cedre is already inside of its stomach right working its way or working its way towards its stomach or what have you and he's like maybe i should just go inside there because this is doing no good you can see this thing's just crushing things then the regal mammoth goes and takes and it's like an elephant right it's got you know obviously it's got this big trunk it's actually got two trunks but it goes and it takes a, its trunk and it's like and you just like you just feel and just like oh man it's this big vacuum right and like animals start you know these beasts start flying up and going up into its nose and you're thinking okay he just like inhales them and eats them or whatever right well whatever he does whatever he's got going on in that snot cavity up there uh is obviously very bad it's acidic because then he goes and he blows out uh i don't know from the other trunk or what but he blows out a bunch of bones you know and uh and the gt robot's like holy jesus these all these bones must be you know are obviously from the real mouth we can tell who's at the top of the food chain right um, now, if you remember, the regal mammoth, though, is on a warpath and still pissed off looking for its child, uh, the baby mammoth that, of course, uh, Sonny captured, thinking that it was the regal mammoth uh, several chapters ago. Um, so this, this, you know, this mother is, the mama's on the warpath, you know what I mean? Anything that gets in mama's way, so it probably doesn't normally just run around and destroy everything in its path. But, um... So it's kind of neat to see that whole thing, too. It doesn't even have to, like, suck you up and ingest you in, down into its stomach or anything like that. It's got something going on up there that just goes and completely just flays all the flesh and organs off your body and then just spits bones out. So very neat stuff. Uh, so then, you know, this GT robot's like, all right, I better get inside its stomach or get in there quick. And I'm thinking, okay, whatever. He's got to get in its mouth probably or somehow, right? I mean, unless he wants to go in through the anus, which is, I don't know, man. <laughs> so to each his own, but it's an exit only for me. Um, so, so this thing all of a sudden comes, starts charging at him, you know, and he's like, but towards the edge of the plateau, and he's like, what the, hell? the thing's charging towards the plateau, the thing goes and charges and just throws itself off the edge of the freaking cliff, you know, two mile drop, and what the hell, so then we go back to, and the chapter the, it wraps up with a couple of pages over here, we wind up seeing, um, wind up seeing Komatsu and uh <clears throat> excuse me Komatsu and Sunny that are climbing up the side of the um the side of the cliff over here and as they're climbing up or whatever they wind up coming upon these uh the, the, it almost it looks like little caves at first but then you see popping out of the caves are these hulking just crazed looking I don't know they look like a cross between like a dog and like a gorilla you know uh they got the you know their their uh, front arms are on the ground and everything like a gorilla like one of the troll kongs almost uh but their whole face just sort of looks like this crazed like Cujo like Doberman so very cool stuff 
Um, they, so they, they're called heavy cliffs. And, uh, and it's funny because Komatsu starts freaking, you know, and he's just on their capture level 30 and all this stuff. But uh, Komatsu goes and kind of starts freaking, you know, he's, oh, my God. And uh, Sonny's like, don't worry about it. They're heavy cliffs. You know, they're like the guardians or the whatever. This is their territory, right? Uh, just leave them be. Don't be aggressive towards them, and they'll leave you be. But if you do wind up pissing one of them off, watch out. <laughs> I just really kind of like that because Komatsu's like shaking as they're going up by him, you know. And uh, so anyway, so then as they're going up by them, <laughs> it's funny because we kind of see this whole like, you know, <laughs> they both look up and they're like, what the hell? What is that? You know, and you see both their faces and they're like, okay, you know, huh? What is that? <laughs> what on earth is that? <laughs> and if you can see there, <laughs> it's this mammoth just just looks like it's just barreling down the side of the cliff. <laughs> and I don't know how they're going to get out of this one. You know, I don't know how strong Sonny's hair is, but <laughs> they're going to have to somehow get to walk out the way because this thing looks like an avalanche coming down the side of a mountain. So <laughs> definitely a cool chapter. Um, a lot of fun because of the just uh, the different dynamics between everything. And my chapter question is, uh, you know, what are your thoughts on Terry and uh, and really how, how they describe that? Although it was brief and although he's an animal that doesn't really talk, the description of, you know, what, you know, Toriko was saying or, or however it was, how it was narrated, that he, you know, he was, he was, he was basically like, hey, listen, I'm going to take this upon myself and take care of this thing that I led here, you know. What do you think about that level of loyalty um, from, from number one, uh, something that's so young, you know, it's an infant, and number two, um, you know, him and Tori Toriko, I, even though, you know, it's his master and everything else he looks at now, they still have just, like, recently met, like, less than 48 hours ago. So uh, to have that type of bond and, and sense of commitment and trust and everything like that, uh, most people, animals, whatever, it takes, you know, months, years, or even a lifetime to build up that type of uh, trust and honor and uh, but what do you think about Terry and just kind of his, uh, you know, his sort of steadfast decision to say, yeah, I'll take care of this shit behind us. So leave your answer to that question in the comments down below. Feel free to hit the thumbs up, the like button if you should think that I deserve it. Um, and subscribe if you haven't done so already. We look forward to catching all of you in the next Van Nation. This is a very nice looking young woman, very heavy chested. Damn it, Bobby.